When you're decorating your home, taking design cues from the architecture and the time period of the house is a smart choice. But what happens when you painstakingly restore a traditional home and your collection of contemporary furniture just doesn't fit in? I'm going to give this living dining room a modern classic makeover using updated English Revival design. These days, it isn't hard to find pieces that are both classic and sustainable. Decorating your home works best when you consider the style of the house itself. And when you lovingly restore a traditional home, you want a design that shows off your hard work. For Liliana and Frank, this house was love at first sight. We looked at quite a few homes before we purchased this one, and a lot of them just looked alike to us. But this one stood out. What I liked about it was the 1930s architecture, the leaded glass, the, uh, the wainscoting, and things that you just don't get now. And as parents of a six-month-old, they want a space that's eco-friendly. Any little piece that we can do that could make our environment better is important to us. And so the fact that Sam will integrate that into our living space is very exciting to us. So I'm here because I want to get a read on your style and I just want you to describe to me what you're looking for. We like the brightness of it, we like right. the wall colour, we're open to a lot more colour being infused into this room. The furniture we have is just not working. Right now it's just very beige and there's no wow factor. And so what about the furniture that's in the dining room? That's a little more on the traditional side. That came from my house and it was a 50s style home. Is there anything that you want to keep. I wouldn't mind if everything went out. That's my favorite kind of makeover. <laughs> Except for the uh, dining room hutch, which we just got uh, three months ago. Yeah. Okay. I think that everything that you have done to update this house is perfect. And mm -hmm. I definitely have a feel for what you want. Good. Excellent. We're looking forward to it. I like okay. it. Yeah. Great. This is a beautiful home and I'm really looking forward to bringing it back to its roots. Frank has lovingly restored this fireplace. The problem is, is that it's being covered by this dark, heavy fire screen and these dark accessories. So I'll find a screen that complements the fireplace and accessories that are better scaled to the size of the mantle. And I'll replace the picture with a mirror to give this place polish and depth. This carpet is too small. It's the size of a postage stamp. And all the furniture feels like it's floating all around. I want a large carpet that's really going to anchor the furniture in the room. We'll sell this sofa and chair and bring in pieces that have more comfort and style and are made from eco-wise materials. We'll add more seating with an ottoman and an old-fashioned daybed. And we'll give away this table and replace it with something that's modern and elegant. So we've got these two pieces here and it just kind of looks like a stopping ground for furniture. I want to put in something that's got a nice curve that's going to soften this area up and I'm thinking of the half moon table. That'll give me a spot for a table lamp and I'll introduce floor lamps to supplement the existing pot lighting and warm up the space. The leaded glass windows are just not being showcased in the way they should be. I want to do something that's going to totally refresh this window. This is a formal dining room and I want to respect the architecture of this space. The big change that I'm going to make is I'm going to put a really beautifully patterned wallpaper above this panelled plate rail and that's going to add some real drama and a hit of colour. Then I'll paint these leaded glass doors as well as the ones in the living room in a complementary colour to help tie the rooms together. The table and chair set is too matchy-matchy. It looks like it was shipped in from the factory showroom floor. I'll keep the table, but we'll sell the chairs and replace them with something that brings a little more drama and elegance. Above the table, we'll put in a chandelier that will reference the leaded glass, and we'll add table lamps for additional light and ambiance. This radiator cover just wasn't finished properly. I think this is going to be a great project for Christian, and a great spot to place a gorgeous piece of art. My inspiration is classic English Revival, and that means comfortable, traditional, and green, both in terms of our eco-friendly choices and our color palette, which includes moss, conifer, meadow, and pear. 
I'll use more neutrals, browns, and creams, and then layer in graphic textures with reflective accessories for more up-to-date touch. I'm heading to the studio of one of North America's most innovative and sought-after ceramicists. Shane Nori is just 29, but his art is in demand around the world. The majority of my work is very neutral, uh, very monochromatic. I prefer colors that you would see more in nature, or, you know, you walk outside, you see a tree, or you see, like, something in a river. Those sort of colors speak to me. Shane? Oh, hey, how are you? I'm good. Here, have a seat. <gasps> Can I have a seat? sit? Yeah, 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 for sure. So I'm just making some bowls right now. Do you want to try it? I want to try okay. it. Are you kidding? No, you just want to kind of pinch it and pull it up like this slowly and raise it up like that. Oh, boy. So try to pull it up a little more. Oh. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I'm feeling very Demi Moore in Ghost. Yeah. Can you fix this? Yeah, no, you know what you do is just kind of Shave like it this. off? Yeah. And then you just start over. Your pieces have sort of an antique or an yeah. aged look to them, and that's really what I'm looking for. And then you know how sometimes you've got that white, is it a glaze that's on yeah, the outside? Yeah, it's a reticulated glaze, like a texture. So you were thinking of something like really? a larger plate, like this size? Yes, I want a real statement piece, something okay. that's really large in the room. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, Shane, I think that my clients are going to love a one-of-a-kind piece. Oh, I'm going to get out of your hair. Okay. I'm not going to ruin any more of your bowls and go wash my hands. Okay. Okay, thanks. thanks. See Bye, you Shane. Later. Bye. I wanted to talk to you about the rad. Okay. What are you going to do? Would you cope it? Yeah. Are you impressed with my saw? I knowledge? like that. When the classic architecture of your home rejects the contemporary designs of your furniture, nobody wins. Liliana and Frank love their 1930s traditional home, but they don't feel that way about their mismatched furniture. So I'm going to make over their living and dining rooms in keeping with this home's stately architecture. My inspiration is classic English revival with a palette of rich greens, warm neutrals, and reflective accents and we've commissioned a world-renowned artist to create a stunning piece for our dining room. Oh, wow. Now I have a nice, fresh, clean palette to work with, and I can actually see all of the architectural details in the space. <gasps> and the leaded glass windows are going to look so great when my cream silk draperies go in, and then I've got a green fabric on the bottom that's actually a recycled polyester. I'm gonna have a big lattice wool carpet. And then on the fireplace, I'm gonna put in a lattice fireplace screen and that's just gonna reference the carpet. And we'll introduce reflective surfaces, including glass side tables and mirrored coffee tables to add a little glamour. Christian is working on my day bed and that is just gonna fill this corner. It's perfect for a living room. And in the dining room, we've started covering the walls in a paper that's ideal for our classic English Revival makeover. It's a William Morris design that first appeared in 1890. It's inspired by an English flower garden and is made from formaldehyde-free paper with water-based inks. I thought that was you. Hey, Sam. You're just in time. I wanted to talk to you about the rad. Did you notice that it's not fitted properly? Yeah, I sure did. Because I would like you to take it out and actually would you cope it? Yeah. Are you impressed with my saw I knowledge? like that. <laughs> yes, I'll use the coping saw, a little jigsaw. You see that lattice grill, though? Mm-hmm. Like, the ones in the front of the house and all throughout the house have caning, so I want I these to be caned. Okay. And then there's this ceiling medallion. Uh-huh. Uh, it needs a light fixture. It sure does. So I'm off. I'm going to go scout one out. I'll be back soon. Okay, I'll get this, uh, uh chaise. I know, it's looking good. Or day bed, And sorry, you got for the you. arm on the right side. Well, that's good news. While Christian finishes building and slip covering the day bed, we're on the hunt for lighting for Frank and Liliana's living and dining room. And this store is full of gorgeous fixtures, many crafted from scrap metal. Hi. <gasps> oh, it's like a lighting candy store in here. Isn't it great? Yeah. So which ones were you thinking? I thought this one. This one I really like. And yeah. then this one as another alternative with the shades. 
this is a better option. Okay. Yeah. I think that this one has got simplicity. It's large enough. I like these shades too. Uh -huh. And I want real ambience in this room for when they have their family gatherings. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Okay. I'll see you back. Yeah. Later. We'll see you later. Sam wants a really fresh looking rad cover for this place, and um, I don't blame her. This one's a little rough around the edges, didn't quite fit properly, so um, I got a few tricks for that. This is my grandpa's old compass, and what I want to do is just set the distance from the spike to the pencil at the widest gap I've got here, three quarter, more like seven eighths of an inch. So what I want to do, set my distance at seven eighths of an inch. What I'm going to do is push the spike end of the compass right up to the edge of the wall, right where the wainscoting is, and just holding the tool horizontally, scribe the profile of the baseboard and all the wainscoting onto the front face of the rad cover. Now I'm going to take this out, take it to the saw, make a nice custom fit. I'm using a jigsaw for the straighter cuts and switching to a coping saw when it gets a bit trickier. Because the blade is thin, this is the best choice for cutting details. I'm gonna change the grill here next. I'm just gonna use a blade right here just to cut the paint line. Free up this little chunk of wood. Reuse that to uh, secure my new grill. Here we go. I bought this at a local metal supplier. Once I'm finished installing both panels, this rad cover will be a much better match. Hi, Sam. Oh, hi, Jules. Here's our chandelier. I've figured out the paint colors, I think. Yeah? Yes. So I narrowed it down to these two. But I think because we're making such a bold move by painting the doors green, I think that we should go with a little bit lighter rather than the, the darker one. Yeah, no, this is really soft. So I'm hoping you can get me a couple gallons of that. Yeah, you bet. Anything else? That chair arrived, and it's a Louis the 16th, so it's the right shape, but it's just too much wood. I want a frame that's painted, and I want fresh upholstery on it, so I think we're gonna have to go the custom route. While Julia hunts for a chair frame that works, I'm mixing up a little magic in the backyard. This is a demi loon table, and I just want to give it a really time-worn and distressed look. Painstakingly restoring the architectural details of a classic house is a rewarding job, but it's only the first step in showcasing the history of your home. The next step is one Frank and Liliana hadn't gotten around to quite yet furnishing their beautiful 1930s home in a style it deserves. So I'm taking a page from Classic English Revival by introducing gorgeous greens, vintage patterns, and luxurious textures with an environmentally friendly style. We've sourced a beautiful chandelier made from scrap metal and some glass-based table lamps for our dining room. Christian has refurbished this radiator cover, and we found some original art for this space, including a spectacular ceramic piece. We've already started to refresh these leaded glass doors in a color that's in keeping with this classic wall covering. The wallpaper is almost done, and it is looking great. It looks like this nook needs to be papered. That's just gonna completely finish off this room. The paint on the doors is looking good. This is the first coat, though. Once the second coat goes on, I'm gonna get a much better read as to the true color. It's gonna be much more rich, and it's gonna be an exact match to our paint swatch. And then, oh, my furniture is here. My day bed is fitting that corner nicely. My sofa, oh, looks great. That large nail head detail looks spectacular. The sofa is made from post-industrial polyester, making it an eco-friendly choice. This skirted ottoman will add softness to the room and provide some extra seating. And the armchair is made from sustainable hardwood and soy-based foam. This color looks like it came right out of an English country home. But then we have the modern graceful lines of this cutout arm. So we're really straddling the modern and traditional world and that is what a transitional piece does. 
While our electrician lights up our dining room, I'll fill this corner of the living room with a piece I found at an antique store. This is a demi loon table, and I just want to give it a really time-worn and distressed look. I've got some beeswax and orange oil, some white painter's pigment, a brush, and of course some gloves. You may know this process as liming. That's when crushed limestone was used. It's also called whitewashing or pickling wood. I'm going to put my beeswax onto the plate. And I'm going to add a little bit of the white pigment. And I'm just going to stir it in. Next step, I'm using my brush in a really circular motion and trying to really work it into the grain of the wood. So after I've covered the entire table in the paste, I'm going to let it stand for about 10 minutes and then I'm going to wipe it off. Now I'm using that same circular motion to take off the surplus wax. Isn't that a lovely finish? This is going to look so great beside Frank and Liliana's mantle. So pretty. Oh, Jesus. I love it. Traditional homes have beautiful details, and when you've taken the time to restore them, you want to be able to show them off. But Frank and Liliana's jumble of contemporary furniture wasn't doing a thing for their classic 1930s home. Now their space is warm, inviting, and well-appointed with timeless touches, reminiscent of an English country home. What was plain and disjointed is now luxurious and gracefully cohesive a beautiful blend of sustainability and style. The transformation of this room is unbelievable. We kept Frank and Liliana's table, but what makes this table work is that we added in these Louis XVI inspired chairs. We recovered these in a hemp and recycled polyester and then added a nail head detail. The chandelier is 31 inches above the table, and that's because a chandelier should always have a connection to the table. Generally, people would tend to hang the art above the plate rail or below the plate rail. But because you're enjoying the art when you're actually sitting at the table, it's perfectly fine to hang between the middle of the wainscoting and above the plate rail. Christian did a great job restoring their rad cover. Now it actually looks as though it's a part of the wainscoting and it's providing the ideal spot for artist Shane Nori's stunning plate. I chose glass lamps for this sideboard because this server is a wood heavy piece. So I wanted to add glass, which adds a lightness up top one of the most dramatic changes in this room is the wallpaper. Above the plate rail, it's just a pop of color, and we painted the doors in a soft green color, which I took right out of the wallpaper, and it's just one of those fine finishing details that makes such a difference in a room. The interesting thing about the living room, it's a series of vignettes that are working in harmony with one another, starting with the day bed. It's really comfortable and this is something that you would have found in English country homes. This is a traditional piece with its pleated skirt and because it's in a softer sandy tone it's not taking up a lot of visual space it's just adding softness. Our fireplace looks so much better. Now we have this lattice and glass screen. The lattice references the diamond pattern in our soft wool rug. Then as you travel up the mantle we have scaped this beautifully with a large round mirror and then we layered in some vases and some beautiful artwork. And these glass top nesting tables and mirror cubes catch the light and reflect the beauty of the room. And then the drapery. The bottom is a recycled patterned polyester and that actually picks up on the pillows and the sofa. And it's really important not just to rely on the overhead lights, but to have different levels of light. And that's what our two floor lamps and our table lamp are doing. Before Frank and Liliana's living and dining room was filled with contemporary mismatched furniture, now I have created a modern classic that is inviting and I cannot wait for them to see it. 
Jeez. Holy. Oh my God. <laughs> I love is, it. This is awesome. I couldn't have thought of this. No. I, okay, I just want to sit on every sofa and just, just test it out. Wow. Oh, the colors are beautiful. Oh my God, this oh. is such a beautiful room. Yeah. Oh my Do God. Oh my God. <laughs> Tranquil. <laughs> <laughs> you goggles bang on. Like it just looks really nice. Oh. You, can I show you your dining room? Can yes. I walk you through? Yes, I'm shaking. <laughs> this looks amazing. They're a Louis XVI inspired chair, and they're weighty, and they fit the proportion of your table. This is amazing. We have an unfinished basement, too, if you guys are still in <laughs> And it's very environmentally unfriendly. So. After lovingly restoring the classic architectural details of a home, you're going to want to show it off. Frank and Liliana wanted a makeover that fit the history of their home. I gave their living and dining rooms an updated, earth-friendly, classic English revival design. Fresh, green, and gorgeous.